Hey guys, in this video we're going to look at how you can scale your scraping using Scrapey Redis when you're scraping with Python Scrapey. So first we're going to look at the things you need to think about and take into account when you're thinking about scraping at scale. Then we're going to get you set up using Scrapey Redis and a Cloud Redis instance. So you can use that for this example. And then we're going to go through a real life scenario where we show you how using Scrapey Redis and a Redis queue can speed up your scraping. So there's a few things to think about when we look at scaling. First off, why would you be looking at scaling? So a good example I always like to think of is if you're wanting to scrape, let's say a million Amazon pages, but you don't want that to take one day, you want it to actually only take one hour. So the way to do that obviously is you have to look at how you can have all those million pages work across multiple different spiders so that the results are done in less than an hour. So there, there's a lot to think about. So you have to think, okay, how quickly do I need this to happen? And how much resources do I need to get the result that I want? So you have to think about cost because you're going to be having to look at running more spiders, which means more VMs, virtual machines. And potentially, if you're looking at scraping sites that need proxies, that's going to cost more in terms of the amount of concurrency that you need from your proxy providers. So these are just some things that you have to think about before you just run into this full tilt. So a simple architecture that we're going to look at in this example is just a distributed worker architecture. So we're going to set up Redis, which is going to hold a queue of URLs that we want to scrape. And then we're going to have two different workers, two different spiders instances, which are going to be running. They're going to be pulling off a URL, processing the URL, and then outputting the processed data to a file. And we're going to see that, okay, if one spider runs, it takes one minute, with two spiders running, it takes 30 seconds. Okay, so we need Redis, obviously, because Redis is where we're going to have all our URLs stored. And this is the central place where our spiders are going to be pulling the URLs from. So to do that, you can get a free account on redis.com. You can set up an account there and they have a very small free plan which is perfect so i've already gone ahead and created my own here we have the redis account page you can see my free subscription it's already set up so for you guys you're just going to click new database and go in there and set that up so once you've got it set up it should just be here and you can just click in and then you can see your public endpoint URL that you need, as well as things like the username and password. So there are the main details that we're going to need for the rest of the tutorial. So now that we have our Redis online, we can go ahead and download the code example, which we have available for you in the description of this video and I'm going to go ahead now and just git clone this repo. So I have VS code here set up with just an empty folder. I'm just going to open up a new terminal. I'm going to just paste in that, it's cloning down the project. As you can see, we have everything we need. The next thing I'm going to do is create the virtual environment, activate it, install Scrapey, and 
and install Scrapey Redis. So that's finished. So everything should be installed correctly. We can just CD into our folder and do a scrapey list to check that everything's working. We have our spider name there. So it looks like it's all fine. And we can open up our spider file and we see the code that we have. The next thing we need is to add the URLs to Redis. So there's a little Python script there, add URLs to Redis. So if we go into this script, we can see that what it's going to do is it's going to push a URL into this quotes queue start URLs. So what we need to do is add the username and password and the Redis connection string in to our line five here so that the Redis client will instantiate correctly and then all the URLs that we want will be pushed into Redis correctly. So we can get these connection details by going to Redis, getting the public endpoint here, copying that, and that is going to be the connection URL and port, yep. And then the username and password are just a bit further down. So the username is default and the password, I'm gonna just copy that. So default and the password is the password. So I think that's all fine. We can save that. And now if I just run that script, add URLs to Redis, looks like there was no error. So now the next thing to do would be to open up Redis. We have Redis Insight, which is a manager for managing your Redis databases, which I've downloaded. Uh, so you can just download that yourselves if you want to have something locally to manage your databases. I find it very handy and it's very easy to use. So what you would do is just add your database, add in the host port, username and password. You know where to get those details now. And then you have your Redis database in the list. So if I now scan, so you can scan your database with this button here, I can see my quotes queue start URLs and I can see the 10 URLs which were added in from the script. So the script worked correctly and Redis is up and running and I was able to push all the URLs I wanted in. So the next part would be just to run the scrapey spider. Uh, I'll just walk you through the code. The scrapey spider will look at the Redis key this Redis key quotes Q start URLs. It'll fetch one URL at a time because I've set the Redis batch size to one. You can set this to 10, you can set this to five, but just for this example, I want to show you how the workers will just take one at a time. If I had set that to 10, one worker would take 10 URLs and then the other worker would have zero URLs. So the other worker would be sitting there doing nothing. So that's why I have it set to one. And um, the next thing here is this max idle time. So this is the time that your spider will wait before it closes itself. So we don't want the spiders just to be sitting there using resources and staying alive the whole time. So this just means that if the spider tries to get a URL and there's no URLs left in Redis, it will idle, it'll try again, it'll idle, it'll try again, and after seven seconds, it'll close itself down. The only other little thing we have here is just the parse function, which takes in the quote, because we're using quotes to scrape as the main site that we're scraping, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. It just has multiple quotes on the page. So we're just taking 
10 different pages of this quotes to scrape site and we're taking the quotes off it. This will just parse out the quote and take the text, the author and the tags and return those. So I can now do a scrapey crawl and I can do the name of it, which is scrape quotes worker. And I'll just run that and hopefully everything works. Port could not be cast to integer value as Redis port number up. Oh, that's because we just forgot one other thing, which is in our settings, we need to set the Redis details as well. Because obviously it went, tried to look for, for Redis and it couldn't connect. So we'll just do the same details here. We can actually just copy the full details from here, I think that should work. Um, let's paste that in. So we've got uh, username, password, and the connection string and the port. And if we try that one more time, we can see it's working, it's doing something. Okay, and we can see some quotes showing up. So there are the quotes. And you can see the debug statement here saying, reading one request from the quotes queue, start URLs, which is our Redis queue. So we can see here that that is reading them. And if we go back to Redis, which we have here, and I refresh the list here, we can see we're down to one. If I refresh it again, we can see they're all gone. So it's been pulling one item from the queue at a time. Now you might say, okay, that's pretty slow. How come it's taking so long? So it took 50 seconds. That's because I've added in a manual delay just so that we could see things a bit more clearly here with this download delay. So ideally you'd have that set to zero, but for the purpose of this, we have it set to five just so you guys can see here what is actually happening in real time. So we can see the item script count was 100 because there's 10 quotes on each page and the spider uh, crawled 10 pages. So obviously that makes 100, 10 by 10. And we can see the response received count is 10. There's the 10 URLs that were scraped. So it all worked correctly. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna refill the queue in Redis with our add URLs to Redis script. We're going to refill the queue and then we're going to set up two workers, not just one, and we're going to run both workers at the same time. And we should see that both of them are pulling from the queue and we should see the elapsed time is about 25 seconds each. So the total time will be half the time of just one spider, which makes sense. And then imagine if you have three spiders, it would be, you know, 15, 20 seconds. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our URLs back into Redis. So let's check Redis again. We have our keys back there. Yeah, we've got our 10 there. Okay, so let's go back and now we want to run two different spiders. So I'm going to just add a second terminal here. So now I can run two spiders at the same time. Okay, so next thing I wanna do is just make sure I'm in the right folder because I need to be able to make sure Scrapey is working for the other terminal. Perfect. Scrapey crawl, the name of the spider minus o for output and then quotes dot json is the file that i want to be populated so if i just copy this over to the other terminal and now i should be able to just run those at the same time and we should see the results. 
So let's try and run that and try and run that on both terminals. So we can see Python is currently running on both terminals. Things are happening on both terminals. It looks like it's working. There is a quotes.json file here, just hidden behind my picture. And we can see that we're flying through the pages. Okay, so it looks like they're both finished. So one spider got six pages and 60 quotes, and the other one got 40 quotes and scraped four pages out of the 10. And if we see in lapse time, 22 seconds for one and 25 seconds for the other. So that was approximately 50% faster than just one spider running at the same time. And we have all the output in one file. So that's very useful because if we need to do any processing on it, they're all in the one file. So we've demonstrated how you can just double the amount of spiders and your time is halved. So we could obviously run three spiders at the same time. We could have a little bash script that would run multiple spiders at the same time so we don't have to do it manually. And this can be expanded out then to also be running on multiple machines at the same time. And then you could obviously have all the output saved into a database, which has a connection that's shared between the different machines so that all the data comes into the same central repository at the end. But for this video, we're just giving you a quick overview of how to use Scrapey Redis. So we'll be doing a more in-depth series on scraping at scale where we look at how to scrape, let's say, 100,000 pages across multiple virtual machines using multiple spiders. So we'll be doing that in the next uh, couple of weeks and we'll have that linked in the description of this video when we're, we're finished with that series. But for now, I think that's it. If you have any other questions or you get stuck on any part of this, please leave a comment or question in the comment section below and we'll do our best to get back to you. And if you're enjoying our videos, please like and subscribe. Thanks guys and see you in the next video.